Hello, my soccer universe. I'm using my energies now to talk about what was happening in Serie Fortunately, we had a Tuesday evening game which allowed me to actually come a little bit down from what happened at the Milan Derby. Um, no worries, I will not dedicate this video all now to Milan. All I want to say about Milan, I will say in my review of the Milan Derby. However, suffice it to say, I am everything but happy. And I think the headline of the video gives it away. I really thought what was Milan were showing last week was bad, but I think especially the showing the first half was totally unworthy of an Italian champion. Say more about that. However, I want to put the focus uh, in this opening uh, on two other teams uh, that, you know, all played twice because there was also a Coppa Italia where we had a major, major, major upset. We'll talk about that uh, shortly, but it's the team that I'm wearing. Juventus and for once, I don't want to go all doom and gloom on Juve um and inter which yes credit where credit credits do i actually think they really are probably the second best team in italy at this very moment which in a way we knew from from beginning that they're definitely better than milan and b better than most of them but i actually want to start at you because yes 15 points penalty totally uh there's a lot of neg negativity around Juventus. However, I have I have to give credit to Allegri as well, because he kind of took the entire um, situation and faced it um, in a way to say, okay, yes, we got hit hit with that, and now we have a relegation fight. However, what everyone is over 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 overlooking, they are still in the cup. Yes, they will have to play Inter now, but they uh, beat a Lazio team that you didn't expect to beat. And then they even approached the game against South Saltana as kind of a, uh, it sounds really good, a relegation six pointer. However, I think what Allegri is doing really, really well is not only framing it this way, but I say, okay, we just play our part. We just play our part. We get, get our points. We may get the points deduction. Uh, it may become less. And if it becomes less, then you is right up there in the Champions League battle again. So yeah, and what they're showing, uh, it is professional, it is Juve. And in that sense, uh, yes, everyone is kind of hitting on them that they are the bad boys and the cheaters, but oh, there was always a little style, there's also a little bit style of Juve to, you know, just let the results do the talking. I think that's what they're doing at the moment. And the other team that I definitely want to mention is Inter, who are probably the Italian team that is mostly primed for a good run in the Champions League, although you never know with Napoli. Uh, Inter have Porto, so a quarterfinal is in there, although Porto is the Serie A slayer, also has, has as we said, and Napoli have to, have to play Frankfurt. So I mean, in that sense, it might actually be that we have two Italians in the um, quarterfinal. That, that is a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I think for Napoli, definitely now the focus is uh, getting this league home. Um, whereas for Inter, I can well see that the focus might actually shift towards the Champions League, uh, particularly as well. And Inzaghi is definitely a cup manager. Yes, Inter were kind of um, taunted by the Milan fans that the champions of Italy are greeting the champions of Arabia. I had a laugh at that as well. Um, but yes, this Inter squad, despite not playing all that well and having a shock loss to Empoli here and, you know, not so good results over there, they at least got six wins out of eight. They're the only team that has beaten Napoli and they are very well still in the running for uh, repeating the Coppa Italia triumph, which I think they must be seen now as the favorites in there uh, with everything that's going. And they're getting also some players back. The other question, of course, is uh, for a team that is nearing financial ruin by their own admission, how they still can get in players and renew a squad is a little bit of a question that we will have to address as well. But yeah, let's get to the Coppa Italia action midweek. Um, we had Inter playing Atalanta and Atalanta were coming in uh, kind of a little bit on a high but I knew that Inter is not losing to uh, Atalanta. Atalanta can beat every team left and right, but the one thing that they have never been able to really beat uh, resoundingly in this uh, success here is Inter. And yes, it's Lautaro Martinez who has been lifting Inter. Uh, in a, I mean, he is on a different level at the moment. 
he assists Darmian uh, and it's a 1-0 uh, win and that was not really much that Atalanta could, 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 could do. Then on Wednesday afternoon, a uh, very entertaining uh, game between Fiorentina and Torino. Um, so actually Fiorentina take a lead through Jovic, Ikone makes it then 2-0, but uh, just in stoppage time uh, there Caramo pulls one back and you think, oh this might go. It was not. Fiorentina actually eased through to a semi-final where we already know they will be favorites because the big sensation happened. Cremonese, a team that is the only winless team in the top five leagues, they get a win. And they get a win at Roma, a Roma team that at that point was the, were the favorites to win the Coppa Italia because everything had opened up for, uh, up, up, up for them. It was Napoli out, it was Milan out. Uh, Fiorentina, Simpitabo or Torino in the semifinals and now you have to play Cremonese and they mess it up. Uh, it was a um, counter-attack that uh, Vedesas got pulled down, uh, the guy, he, he, he converts on the penal penalty and then a Celic on goal seals the deal and Cremonese get another upset and again I cannot even say it enough they haven't even won in, in Serie A. Um, the, Roma seemed uh, shocked, only Belotti pulls one back very, very late, but it was too little, too late, Cremonese holding out. And that Cremonese, I remember early in the season, already gave uh, Roma a little bit of trouble and in the end fell short. So, interesting for sure. And then I actually thought that Lazio could threaten Juve, but ever since they beat Milan, Lazio have not, 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 not good. And it's a goal by Bremer just before they have, who see Juve seal the deal. Uh, there was not much from Lazio coming and Juve deserved that win. They also threw to the semi-final where we have now two very different matchups. We have on the one hand Cremonese meeting uh, Fiorentina, so the complete outsider. And Fiorentina also uh, will see themselves more or less as an underdog against uh, one of the biggest duels in Italy, uh, Inter against Juve in a uh, Derby d'Italia semi-final. All of them will be played April, uh, so it's a long time to go. A lot of things can happen at the moment. You will definitely see that Inter uh, Fiorentina would be the favorites to reach that final. Going over to the happenings in, uh, in, in, in Serie A, I mean, Crem Cremonese after the upset, lose at home to Lecce, whereas Roma may make up with a 2 0 win over Empoli. Both goals scored after Dybala uh, corner kicks, both goals come in the first six minutes of, of the game and then they can just kill the game off. So it was rather easy, but it was an important win for uh, Roma's Champions League uh, fight. Uh, Sassuolo, seemingly the win over Milan gave Sassuolo uh, a lot of lift. They were already the better team against At Atalanta when Mele got sent off a rather rough tackle. Uh, it needed VAR, uh, but it was a rough tackle on Berardi. Uh, and then it was just a matter of time. Uh, Sassuolo laid siege uh, onto the Atalanta goal. And in the end, it's Lorienté who came over from Lorient uh, to score the winner. Luis Moura is even standing off, but that should have been a much bigger score than it actually was. And at the moment, I'm also wondering a teeny bit about Atalanta because they were also flying high and they're coming down a little bit. Um, Napoli didn't show much in the first half of the uh, game at Spezia because they couldn't really break down Spezia, uh, Spezia. but then they get a penalty early in the second half. Quaraz Galia um, converts and then it's the Osiman show and especially his uh, first goal where he just jumps. It's almost uh, Cristiano-like high, high, high up. Uh, even the keeper can't can get that and, sc and scores in and then the celebration of Napoli plays. Yeah, he was up there, up, up, up there. It was really, really fun. And then Quara could make his second goal, but he sees Ozyman in an even better position, squares it over and it is 3-0 and they continue. Ozyman is at the moment the star and I would be very surprised if he's not. Uh, if he, he, he can it for that uh, Ozyman is not the MVP of the league uh, this year. He is absolutely amazing. Uh, Torino bounced back from the loss uh, in the Cup semi-final with a 1-0 win over Udinese. Um, and Fiorentina, on the other hand, lose, lose, lose home. Um, it was first an Orsolini pen penalty, but there was a, bit, a little bit of a backstory because I think it was a posh header that got cleared off the line by Jovic. Uh, Yuri thought, thought it was in, but then there was a hand ball uh, in the build-up as well. So in the end, Orsolini gets a penalty. It's 1-0 for Bologna. 
Then it's the Saponara show who gets the, uh, I think, an equalizer, but also hits with a wonderful scissor kick, the crossbar. That would have been goal of the year in Italy. If that would have gone, gone in, uh, I heard um, um, Horncastle uh, saying that this reminded him so much uh, of the Panini uh, a picture. Absolute wonderful strike. Unfortunately, it was not, no, 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 not B, but you know, what was? Stefan Posch, Austrian, gets another winner for um, Bologna, his fourth goal, or, or already he had, has it on the 47th. And Bologna rather played home rather safely and win 2 1 at Fior. Fiorentina and Fior Bologna have been, just if I take league results, the biggest surprise. Time for the derby. Um, I said it already before, you saw it in it. The first half. I understand what Pioli was doing. I understand uh, you were leaking goals left and right. So what do you do? You take a new system. You play 5-3-2. Uh, or 3-5-2. However, it's 3 at the back. You want to keep it tight. You want to keep it calm, compact. I even can a little bit understand why he chose Origi and Giroud over Leao. However... This was only to mirror Inter and limit damage. And if it wasn't for Tato Rujano again stepping up in the Milan Derby, he is an abject goalkeeper. And again, I think Inter the, uh, saw that his lack of control of the area is the one weakness that um, Inter uh, that Milan have, the one uh, in defense, uh, or the, not the one, the big weakness. So they attacked the one, but he had a few really good reflexes that actually uh, saved an earlier uh, go, um, going behind. And at least for the first third, I mean, it's Milan were not happening. Whenever they had the ball, they lost it immediately. And what annoys me even more, what really annoys me is you play counter-attacking. You want to uh, be tight and you want to play counter -attack. Fair enough. It's not what you've been playing all, all, all along, but okay for limiting damage. But you have one of the fastest players in the league sitting on the bench in Rafaleo. And don't give me the crap for his lack of work ethic. Pioli, I think in that moment, Pioli has lost the team. Uh, because Leao is by far, I don't know by far, but he's clearly the best player of the squad. Yes, after the World Cup, Giroud, more on him later, Theo Hernandez, Rafa Leao are all in awful shape. Yes, the defense does not look good. I also don't understand why you have Krunic up front. I mean, can't you get over yourself and give? I mean, Messias was kind of the weak link. He needed to, to come off. As soon as you bring Brahim, there's a little bit more movement going forward, a little bit, bit more speed. But why not try, for instance, try some, some something new? You, you go for DB, there's no Ben Benazir. You have Charles de Ketelare, please, you spend so much money. You Can you use a young player, give him some minutes, show him that you believe in him. Let him play as a deep playing midfielder, like the vermin Chalanoglu is doing for Inter. He's also a number 10. I mean, there are so many things. This was just defensive and everything that is not Milan. And you know what, what on top? It did not work. If you go nil nil in the half and then you make some some, some chases, I, I I would give even some credit to Pioli because I, I understood I don't want to give up six here. So let's keep it tight. Let Inter hit us. But the moment there was one short moment where in, where Milan was a little bit on the front foot, and right from that Inter can launch a counter attack. There is a corner. Chalnoglu we pips in and La 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 Martinez can head 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 in because a. Uh, we know that Tata Trojano cannot really come out, but this goal is not on him. Uh, but the defense, suddenly Kier, who is slow, uh, finds himself in between Jeko and Latro, and Latro heads it home. And Inter had a field day with Milan. They, this should have been two or three at the half. Honestly, Inter were that much better. I was watching this game. It reminded me a lot about the derby that was played on the same date a year ago, where Milan stole a game from Inter. And the funny thing is, as good as Inter were in the first half and also in that game, they also allowed Milan back into the game. I don't know. They just said, okay, Milan, we know you have a task of time. 
Why don't, don't you come back? Yes, there were a few changes made. Uh, Brian Diaz came in. Uh, Leao came finally in. Salimakas, also another one that you could have tried from, from, from the beginning instead of Calabria, who has not. I love Calabria. Milan product, I really do. But he has not had a good time as well. And suddenly you saw things working. Leao actually taking on op opponents, causing trouble. Uh, the other one, Malik Ja, is, he comes on late. He had two excellent performances for Milan in the uh, fall and then not playing again. And now come on again, uh, basically uh, muscling Lukaku around. How often does that happen? Yes, Lukaku is not out in full fit fitness, but it is a player that can say, try him. It is just, it's all so boo. I think uh, this derby loss has to go down to Pioli and it has to also go down and I hate to say it because I love that guy. He is a big part that Milan wanted Scudetto. But when Giroud was in perfect scoring position of a brilliant assist by uh, Rafa Leao, acres of space. And yes, he wants to take it with the other foot because he, the confidence is not high. He takes a heavy touch and instead of going on goal, where, when everyone saw that, everyone thought uh, Giroud in form converts it, it's 1-1 one, one, and Milan might actually again go on to win this one. And what happens? He takes a heavy touch with his left foot and it goes straight to the inter-defense. That was completely unsorted. At that moment I knew there's no coming back, there will be no equalizer, and so it was. Unworthy. This first half, I have to, I have, 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 have to say, when I, I looked at the derby, uh, I like Milan in the white pants, uh, there were many good uh, signs. I looked at that, and I said, yeah, there is a Scudetto, there is the Cocarda, these are the nom nominally the two biggest teams in Italy at the moment. Yes, don't, nah, nah, Apple defense, don't add me. You're at the moment the best team, but you know, from the last season, this is a marquee. But Milan should have, at halftime, a Serie A official shooter going and ripped off the Scudetto off their shirts. This was unworthy. I was, I'm still very, very upset about that. Absolutely unworthy. And Milan are sinking and took big games to Reno and the Champions League come, 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 come up. And unfortunately, I think Pioli has lost. I think Pioli will need to go unless he can find a turnaround, but he needs to work with the younger players because that's the Milan project. And I thought that he's really good at that, but at the moment he stinks at that. And I really hate to say it, but I think he has to go and there needs to be a major rebuild and blah, 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 but I don't wanna start another Sempre Milan podcast here. Uh, we also had Lazio again giving up a lead. Lazio is the team, I think they had, they had the lead in seven games uh, and did not win. That's the highest in Serie A. Pedro giving them a lead at lowly Verona, but Ngonga uh, get, get, getting one back and Verona getting a vital point. Sampdoria also, after Monza wins at Juve, they um, only play a 2-2 at home to Sampdoria. Big points for Sampdoria, maybe, but probably three would, would be more important. and. Juve Vlaovic is back, scoring two, one is a penalty, but Kostic is also another one uh, that has to be mentioned here. Uh, it was definitely also not the uh, game. I think one of the young Salinitana defenders who, who was playing, he grew up at Juve and he had an uh, awful uh, game. He gave away the penalty. He uh, got completely outplayed uh, on many occasions. So, you know, didn't really help that yeah, he was playing in there. So, yeah, so Juve, with that, get back another three points. Relegation trouble definitely banished. They're still on mid-table, but you know, 26 plus 15 is 41. They would be at the moment in third place overall. And all my adjusted standings only reflect in both of these uh, is the 15-point penalty in there. So overall, you is doing uh, still very, very, very good. Napoli flying high. Uh, the champions elect Inter is on a very safe uh, second place, but it is the Champions League battle where Milan needs to get a grip. There are still a lot of games to be played. I still think quality-wise Milan should be better than Lazio and Atalanta and even Roma. And this is the other thing that don't get me because uh, Milan played brilliant against Roma, gave away that sure win. And ever since it's just a disaster. 
but Milan is better than the, it has a better squad than these three teams. They are just in such a bad shape uh, that yeah. But I think they're still. I'm still on the hopeful side. I'm a little bit worried. It's only 57% because it was very close to 80% for most of the season. On the bottom, Ellas uh, creeping closer to Spezia and also Salinitana is getting get, get in there. Sassuolo door getting out of the lift. I think Sassuolo will uh, get themselves out of any relegation trouble. Lecce probably could get in. I have little hope for Sampdoria and even less hope for Cremonese, to be honest, uh, which is also reflected a little bit in the expected standings where you see, I mean, the real relegation of Salentana, Ellas and Spezia, those there. And for Champions League, yeah, Milan just barely holding on to the fourth spot, but I think top four is still very much realistic. I just don't want to hear that this is the new Scudetto. That I don't want to hear. I give you two rounds because I'm not sure if I will do a Serie A video next week. Uh, given there's a Champions League coming and blah blah blah, and you know, need to take it a little a little bit easier. If I have the time, if I find the time, I will do it. But it's probably unlikely. Milan play on Friday evening to Arino. Uh, it's a 100% must win, and then you can play against Spurs. So you have two home games, absolute must wins. I want to point out Lazio against Atalanta. This is also for Champions League qualification uh, six-point game. We have, of course, a grudge match between Juve and Fiorentina. And there's the little matter of Napoli Cremonese. Can Napoli exact a revenge two days before Valentine's Day? I hope they will not play against the Valentine's Day kids. Uh, Monday we have Sampdoria against Inter. Sampdoria has caused Inter some trouble before, but not going to happen this time. Then uh, the week after, um, Sassolo Napoli, that's Probably a stumbling block, but I wouldn't see Monza and Milan. Monza scare me a little bit. Inter will play against Udinese also because the Champions League played a little bit sooner. Other than that, there's not really the big uh, match in there when I see Roma, Verona, Spezia, Juve. It's all rather uh, straightforward games, but you know, those are the ones where you usually don't get straight. That was it for me from Serie A. I want to hear your opinion on everything that happened in Serie A. Who, who do you think will make it into the Champions League? And yeah, let me know about anything else. Again, I don't want to only talk about Milan. We have to talk about other teams as well that are doing quite uh, well. And there's probably a little bit more joy to talk about. I'm starting to lose my voice again. So yeah, I want to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.